uh, straw weight fight week, I guess. How's, uh, how's everything playing out so far for you? Do you want the honest truth? Yes. 200 grams of carbs, three and a half pounds a go. Put in that weight. Is, is it, are you finding it more, I mean, you knew it was going to be a challenge, right? You knew it was going to be a physical test, a mental test. Mm -hmm. Are you finding it more difficult than you thought it would be, or how is it comparing? The only difference in the camp is the macro change. So we've changed from a high, higher fat, we took that out and gave me more carbs to fuel me. And instead of running six or seven kilometers, um, I'm now running 10, maybe 12 on some days. So I've added one or two extra runs in a week and that's been the only difference. This was about, the drop was because I was outsized. Um, and I think you can all see that was always the deal. I'd always get in there and the gears would be so big. And uh, I remember doing a DEXA scan years ago and they kind of just said, if you drop, you're going to lose a lot uh, of muscle and stuff. And this time we've done it and I haven't. I've just, I've really, I know every fighter will say this, but I don't cheat. I really don't cheat. Like I, I give everything I can, but I've found more. And I've done that because this is my dream. Like my dream is to do this for as long as I can, as many fights as I can. And um, I've probably done it at the right time. I've got a bit of a name behind me. I've managed to beat some good girls. I've got some big finishes at a higher weight. I've gone away, perfected my craft, dropped the weight correctly, made weight or making weight safely. And I think if you look at me, I'm not drawn in. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm all good, do you know what I mean? So I just feel really calm and ready and I think there's a new sense of stillness because I've done more and I know what I've normally done and I've done more, so I'm just ready. It seems to me like, because I, I thought, well, this is going to be like a huge lifestyle change. Obviously, it's sacrifice and commitment, but it doesn't seem like a massive lifestyle change. Not really. I've just had to be, instead of dieting for six weeks, 10, 12, um, don't get me wrong, coming out here for Paddy's fight week was horrific because I couldn't eat, but the PI is the PI, so they sorted me out with the food, and Christmas was... Uh, I was in uh, the Canary Islands, which in a place called Tenerife, high up in the mountains, doing some acclimation up there when it got really cold for two weeks, and it was hard watching everyone. I'd sit there every night, and they watching them eat, and... Um, I actually really liked Diane Belbita, but every meal time I was like, I hate you, <laughs> I hate you um, for doing this to me. But look, no one's asked me, no one's forcing me to do this. I'm doing this because I believe the difference was I was being outsized. Um, when I've been finished in, in them jiu-jitsu situations, it was always to a black belt who had cut a lot, a lot of weight. And you would have seen against Julia, um, she's a friend of mine now, actually, and um, she's still cutting 40 and 16 pounds in the fight week, do you know what I mean? And I was like, I cut two pounds for you, Julia. <laughs> and we laugh about it now. Um, but, yeah, it's the right decision, I believe. Anytime somebody changes weight classes, like, we always wonder, like, well, how are they going to feel on fight night? Mm -hmm. As you sit there now, knowing what you've done, I mean, could, do you automatically know right now, like, oh, I'm going to feel better, I do feel better, or do you even have that little thing of, like, eh, we'll, we'll see you on Saturday? So... We know what my optimum weight is, so when we've done this fight camp and we've recorded the fight rounds and we've watched the output and when I can dip into the red zone and how fast the recovery is, I know that when I reload after eating on Friday, I'll probably be hitting the, the number, maybe 125, between 125 and 130. That is my optimum level. That's what I would be on fight weeks normally when I'd see you normally. So... They were my best rounds. The lower the weight got, the faster I've been. And, um, you know, with mine and Paddy's nutritionist, he has this special way of melting fat off people, um, but keeping the numbers correct and keeping the weight, making it safely and, and correct. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen a fighter drop a weight and have 200 grams of carbs the day before they make them weight. So. Um, I've really, honestly, I've put the work in and I can't wait to show you all on Saturday. That's awesome. All right, well, now we have the actual fight to talk about, mm -hmm. right? A rematch. Um, thoughts when it was offered? I mean, it, it, was it a fight that you, like, wanted? You just said you like her, so yeah. I mean, was it a fight you wanted or what do you think? 
Well, you know, with me, I've, everyone I've ever been given, I've talked even when stylistically I knew it was going to be the toughest night of my life. When I offered this, I, I was said to my manager, Graham, really? He said, yes, princess. I went, yes, boss, I'm in. Um, I know she's like me, so we want to fight. And by fight, I just mean probably stand and bang a little bit longer than the other one's going to try and take the other one down for. So um, it excites me to know that I'm, we can have trade-offs. It excites me to know that it's hard for her to be put away. So if I put her away, it shows that I am the caliber that I believe that I am. And when we did fight, it was her debut and I had really bad food poisoning that day. Like, I remembered the second I got out the cage, I was, like, sick on Megan Levy's shoe. Do you know what I mean? I was, like, holding it in. And um, I wasn't the best me that night. She wasn't the best here. We've both gone away, give our life to this craft. I, I feel like me here and Gillian Robertson are all quite similar, and we love this game, and we lean on the job, and we lean in front of everyone else, and we just want to fight. And I'm getting a solid dance partner in that. And... Um, yeah, I don't even know what she's saying about me, but I'm sure it's nothing too bad. She says she, she respects you, she likes you, and she's like, there's no way this fight isn't going to be amazing. She's like, we both love to stand and bang. Yeah. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think the, the respect is there for, for both of us, you know, when it doesn't have to be. You'll see that sometimes when two athletes really respect each other, you get the best out of each other in the octagon. So let's go, girl. I love it. Last thing for me, uh, pick up a big win here. You know, you've made these lifestyle changes. You made these, well, not huge, but you've made these sacrifices. What's the plan for, for 2024? I mean, is, is this a weight that you can fight frequently yet? Are you wanting to fight a lot? I guess just what's the, what's the, the plan for you? I, I wouldn't need more than eight to ten weeks. Um, I would just always like eight weeks because you could have a week for a deload and maybe a couple of days for il illness or injury. That's how I have it in my mind. I'm not looking past this weekend, but I will fight on eight weeks notice as many times as possible. Um, I think I've got five fights left on my contract after this and I'm hitting me prime, I'm 33, I'm ready to go. Like, as often as you want, I'll be like Kevin Holland. Yes, Mick Maynard, I'm in, lad. Hey, Molly. Hi, mate. Um, are we gonna see some infamous pictures of like, you know, you blowing up like Patty after the fight? Um, Paul Reed and Paul Rimmer will punch my head in and um, I think my fiance will too, so I don't think so. I don't even think you'll see me with alcohol. Um, I don't think you'll see me on any benders either. I feel like what I went through the last 14 months of what what the the hell the trolls have given, the, the hell online has given, I keep saying it's like I've made it someone the way that they've got on me. Um, so I think the applause doesn't mean the same. The troll doesn't mean the same anymore. Like, you know, I've always got this passion, like, I'm fighting for yous, I'm fighting for the fans. You can get to fuck now, I'm fighting for myself. Um, I'm fighting for Molly McCann, I'm fighting for my legacy, I'm fighting for my fiance and for my family. And it just matters about me and my performance and that's it now. So to answer your question, I'm keeping the abs. <laughs> Nowadays, it seems like fighters are getting a lot of shit after fights, but it feels like after your last few fights, you've gotten way more than, than a lot of fighters. And I guess, why do you, is it because you've had the spotlight on you for the past couple of years? Do you think that kind of adds up to it? Or do you feel like, I don't know, what do you think it is? I just feel like the culture's changed in our society. Um, I could tell you right now, the sky is blue and Chad from Denver is gonna say, no, it's not, it's orange. You know, so it like, I sent John Anik a message the other day, like you didn't do nothing wrong. Like you, you have every right to say what you have to say. Those people who are putting their opinions on us, we haven't asked for it. We don't give you our opinion on you. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, people are just changing. I think people are so much more negative. Um, but, the way in which I've dealt with that is just like, like I say, I used to, I need affirmation of, of maybe looking to, to comments like that meant that I was someone. And I think when you look, you look at girls and the way that they're changing the lips, the face, the, the bum, the boobs, with like all the cosmetic surgery, it's because they need, 
the endorphin release comes from people being like like and I think that people just have got too much to say those who aren't happy in their own lives are going to project onto other people and mate you can say what you want about me now there's not much I haven't read fucking go for it I'm, the good thing for me is if people are writing about me it means that I am doing something right because I'm offending you for merely breathing so I'm like cool it means I'll still get paid thank you Speaking of the fans, you know, fighting from the fighting in the OT arena three times, Madison Square Garden, fighting now back at the Apex, like, does that do anything for you, or is it a fight of fight? Oh, it's unreal. Do you know how chilled this week is? Can you see how calm I am? Because I'm not, me and Paddy aren't getting launched round everywhere, having to do everything. Um, coming here is like home away from home. This is my 12th fight here now, so like you are kind of like colleagues, I see it. Um, and it's nice to come into a safe environment. This would be the first time my mum has come to America, first time that she's going to be able to watch me in America. Um, so I'm not losing in front of my ma, that's for sure. And then finally, uh, you know, you, you, you competed in Polaris uh, in November. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you were very emotional after that win because mm -hmm. I think you were you know, trying to prove to shut, the, shut, shut people up. How good did that win feel? I, it didn't even feel like a win because I had that much pressure on me going into it. But I think it was a very McCann way. Um, pull guard and get an armbar. I didn't wrestle, I didn't double leg. I didn't put her on the floor and make it into like a combat jiu-jitsu match. I done pure jiu-jitsu. I made the joke of it saying Julius taught me that one, you know, in the last fight. And I am the first one to take the piss out of myself. I'm the first one to joke and stuff. So I don't take the stuff too serious, but the pressure relieved when I knew, fuck, I am all right. It, like I've just fought two unreal black belts who are much, much bigger than me. I'm better at me in that, in that position, you know? Um, after that, three weeks later, I'd done the ADCC British Open. I won that, I got my brown belt and I've been in that many um, compromising situations and that much adversity in this business in the last five years. I feel like I've just got, like, I can manage it now. And no one taught me and Patrick how to handle the spotlight being thrown on you. So, yeah, we've made some mistakes. All right, we've said some madness because you, you're just responding and fight or flight in these situations, you know. And then I think coming away from it, like I say, I'm just not giving everyone anything, everything anymore. So I used to give so much to the fans. I used to give so much to this. And I'm just not now. Um, I'm going to protect myself, look after myself, and save the energy for fight night. Do you know what I mean? If I'm going to get fucking trolled anyway, I may as well just enjoy myself and not give them as much to talk about. At 115, is it like lean meat Molly McCann? Or I just, I mean, I, I've been telling everyone I'm just a slice of mortadello now. I mean, you're with me, lads. Look how much weight you've lost. Me, you, Eddie Hearn, and Dana White. On, we'll be doing three day fasts together soon, won't we? Yeah. Um, when I was a boxer, when I was like 16, they used to call me the machine, Molly the machine McCann. But I feel like I'm built off being a meatball. I've, I've got a restaurant called Palpetta, which means meatball in Italian. I don't think that's leaving me like, but um, yeah, uh, maybe I'll put a, a caption on saying, right, give me a new nickname. We'll see what we, what we are now. I'm all for the mortadella. I love some mortadella. <laughs> <laughs> love well, and this is kind of a silly, just one question dealing back with like the, the, the diet changes and the eating, the differences. A lot of times when people do that, they notice their palate change. So my question to you is, is do you find certain things much more tasty than what they used to be? And there are, are there some dishes now that you just can't stand them anymore? I'd probably eat a shit sandwich now. That's how I eat. <laughs> shit on toast. Now, um, I'd probably eat a lot more than I ever would eat before, to be honest with you, mate. Um, not literally, guys. I know the internet's going to run with that one. Jokes. Um, now, I... It made me... Imagine opening a restaurant, right? I like after Paddy's fight, I took him to the restaurant and I made him everything on the menu, and he ate the whole menu, and he was just like, "I'm really sorry to do this to you," because it was being recorded for a reality TV show that we're doing, and um, it's just made me really appreciate 
food more and not gluttony. Um, and I just think I'm a lot more grateful for a meal. I feel like this has really taught me, I know some people don't believe it, but I am a I've got a lot of humility, and, it, and I do, I am a humble person, but it's taught me a lot more, it's made me more grounded and just, when you look at what's going on in the Middle East and things, and in country, I'm not going to make it like a political thing, but when you see that there's little babies dying, starving all over, it's just like, I'm good, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm getting a meal, I've got a, a house, my, I've got heating on, and I fight for the best promotion in the world, win, lose or draw. So I'm just a very grateful person who will be grateful for some more carbs on Friday. <laughs> and do you think that is the no alcohol or the, or the pulling back from drinking alcohol, is that something that you think you're going to stick with? Um, I feel like I've always celebrated with the booze, do you know what I mean? Um, and that's where I end up probably getting in trouble a lot of the time. <laughs> Um, or put me foot in it. I feel like what this has taught me is about accountability. And I feel like maybe more moderation. I'm teaching myself moderation and maybe I won't annoy people with my high pitched voice as much if, I haven't got, if I'm not fully loaded on the Guinness or the gin. Um, but I wouldn't say like I'm gonna be sober for the rest of my life because I'll definitely probably cheers one on, on Saturday maybe, but um, it's something that I'm, I've, I said literally last week to my fiance. I think I enjoy life more not being pissed on my head <laughs> all the time. I, an exception would probably be when I go to watch Everton Football Club because this watching that soccer team, football team play is, is painful. So <laughs> it numbs the pain. <laughs> That's awesome. Best of luck on Thank Saturday. Thank you, boss. Am I done? Awesome. Thank you, team. See you on Saturday.